Big recruiting day yesterday, Stewie, as DeCoria Moore's back in town. Back in town. Uh, he's on an official visit yes. here. OV. Um, and, and it seems like LSU is is rolling it out here. Now, DeCoria Moore, who is widely considered the top receiver in this year's cycle, uh, ha- has been open about his love for LSU uh, as almost being, and not almost, being a dream school for him. Uh, growing up watching LSU wide receivers play, and he had a chance to sit down and spend some time uh, with the top dog or one of the top dogs in the in the frat right now in Jamar Chase. Uh, mm-hmm. And DeCorian Moore was in town on an official visit Thursday. He spent Wednesday evening uh, with former LSU standout Jamar Chase. Of course, Chase, first-round pick, Cincinnati Bengals going into a contract year. You can see that LSU is really starting to open up the Rolodex and, and you know use some of the the bigger guns in, in recruiting to Corey and Moore to allow him to know uh, what he means. I, I still think that they obviously have an uphill climb, and really, I, I feel the uphill climb is is because of the mom and mm-hmm. the involvement of of I guess is it is it Marjan? Marjan is is her name and. Look, I cannot give any advice. I have no reference. I have not been a part firsthand of my immediate kid being recruited yeah. at a high level. So I have no idea really how it would affect me or how much you're involved, especially with a prospect as talented and as really coveted as, as DK Moore is. Right. I mean, he could go to any college in the country and any college he showed up to. He could demand just about anything that he wanted that was within, you know, reason, uh, reason and, and and pull it off and get it. And then go out his freshman year, perform better than people think he actually is and come back for his sophomore year. Ask for more. And get it. So. I don't know, but I, I will say that. At LSU, covering LSU, we've seen a lot of high-profile guys be recruited. You know, what I mean, like this is this is nothing new. I mean, DK Moore's a special player. He's a big-time talent. He's not that much different than covering Terrace Marshall, Jamar Chase, Odell Beckham, Jarvis Landry when they were coming out. I mean, all these guys were must-have, must-get, could go anywhere they wanted type prospects. I didn't see their mom or hear their mom as involved as it seems Marjan is, or at least publicly. I'm sure all of their mothers were very much involved behind the scenes. And, you know, it's not saying that that's good or bad. I'm just saying I've never really seen it. And it seems as if the what Ed Ogeron used to call the, the champion of recruiting. You got to find the decision maker, the person that matters, the one that is going to move the meter, the one that when they speak, the player, the prospect is going to listen, right? And it seems like that person for DK is his mom. And I'm sure that's been a tale as old as time in recruiting, right? Like get to the mom, you can get to the player. It just seems like Marjan is is a little bit more vocal than then you've you, you've seen other high profile players moms at, at at this part of the recruiting process. It's not wrong. It's it's not right. It's not indifferent. It just kind of is what it is. And it seems like she's the one that is going Steering. to have to, you know, really be sold on how this is going to go down. I will say this: I believe DK Moore is in that class of prospect that the state of Texas, Texas in particular, Steve Sarkeesian and his crew are just not going to let out of the the border they're not going to let cross state lines they're not going to let them go to an sec what could be rival and that's smart i mean by, by all accounts colin simmons had everything that he wanted everything he asked for in recruiting lsu gave him everything personally for the family in support of his younger brother. Everything was there for him to come to LSU. Now, in recruiting, you always hear from the school that just misses, man, he really wanted to come here. 
And, you know, sometimes that's folklore. Sometimes, you know, it is true. And, you know, the Joe McKnight situation. Joe McKnight wanted to go to Ole Miss. The bag was too heavy at USC. Just couldn't do it. It was a business deal, right? There are those situations. But in in this particular situation, I think that Texas is playing that game of, look, it's cute that you go out and you get recruited by all these schools. And all these schools really believe that they're going to get you. But when it comes down to nut-cutting time and it's time to really like sit down, negotiate, and stroke the check, nobody's going to outbid us, speaking from Texas' standpoint, in losing their top-flight meter moving prospects like Colin Simmons was last season and like DK Moore is this recruiting cycle. And while I I acknowledge that LSU recruiting wide receivers, you better come with it. I mean, like there may not be a better program in the country that can sell you on the legacy, can sell you on the production and sell you on the future like LSU football can at wide receiver. They've got it all. Look at what they just did. Right? So, if it's true that your dream has been to play LSU football, well then DK, here, buddy. I mean, here. Let Jamar Chase walk you through it. Here it is. Let let Jamar Chase tell you what it's like to be one of the best players on campus at LSU with a great team. And a great quarterback, which you will indubitably have with Bryce Underwood. You would have to think that that would play a factor. I mean, I know Texas has Arch. That's, that, that, I know, but that's th- where I'm there, going with it. There's there's a different there's a different feel of the come up it's together. I mean, you had Burrow and Chase kind of and they did come in together. Burrow and Jefferson kind of ride that elevator together to success. Whenever you come in and you're able to kind of build that camaraderie at the same time and you go through the experiences that like because you could say Arch and the talent is undeniable, but the off the field has got to be totally different than what you would get with a freshman coming in in your same class where you're like you're kind of in, on this this elevator to success together. Like how cool is this? Arch feels like he's got secret service around him to where, all right, I'll see you at football practice and I'll see you during the games. I have no clue where he goes between Monday through Friday and Sunday that isn't at the facility. Yeah. Like you don't know what he does, but with a like somebody that you're recruited with and you get to ride the wave together, you kind of get to unleash the that whole experience as a tandem as opposed to I mean, I don't know if Arch really gets to get out. You know, he's in that manning bubble of don't do anything that mm-hmm. could possibly be perceived as anything public. Like the cat has Instagram, but he doesn't follow anyone. And it's like private for somebody that I guess polarizing it or what it would be, he doesn't get to do any of that. So it's not necessarily the most fun, I would imagine. Yeah. Just because of where he is. But if you get, and I don't know if Texas has that same chip of a Jamar Chase. Like, who are you bringing in to compare me to? Because Jamar can tell you, brother, I was committed to Kansas. I was committed to Florida. Almost went to TCU. I almost went to TCU. They tried to make me play defensive back at LSU. That got away. that went away, and I still came to LSU. And I don't know what my future would be like if I didn't. I mean, Florida is an absolute disaster. I mean, God knows what would have happened at Kansas, TCU. They've had a little bit of a run, but nothing. I don't think he'd have been a top five pick in a perennial at a have a Super Bowl appearance. And all of the things that came with it if he wasn't at LSU. Like he you made could, the right choice. Yeah, I think you could look at him specifically and say LSU probably molded, like, obviously the talent's undeniable, but the circumstance at LSU was perfect for me. Same thing's going to happen to DK Moore when you look at the class of 2025. Like, brother, you're going to play. Yeah. No, no doubt. Like, you could sell everything if you're LSU. Then it just comes down to Texas is going to go above and beyond whatever that check is. Tommy says if that's the case, then why use the resources on him? Why waste the resources on him? Look, that's just my speculation. That's just my feeling on it. If you're an LSU recruiting coach, if you're an LSU coach, if you're somebody who's in charge of building the roster, you got to go all in on a guy like this, especially somebody who's been committed to you. It's just my feeling that in speaking to people that were around the Colin Simmons situation, 
people felt very confident. I mean, in talking to the family and talking to people close to the situation that, you know, LSU had done every single thing they could do to present the best case to Colin Simmons to play. And they had playing time available. I mean, they had everything for Simmons. And from all accounts, Simmons was really torn. Yeah, like I mean, it was it, it was, and then Texas at the end just said, "Look, this is there's no decision, right? Yeah, there's no choice. Tell me what it takes. <laughs> you know, like it I'm was taking, always uh, Texas. I mean, you know, it's like uh, I mean, I guess I would take like a a Say, Tesla and like a couple million. We're like, well, here, boom, here's a Tesla. Dude, you could have said more. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> what else? The, you with the cyber truck? You know, like it's like. Okay, well then, I mean, you know, hook them. I mean, yeah. uh, we're in, you know, like, I mean, it's, and, and from Texas's standpoint, this is not me hating. I, I'm not bashing on Texas. I'm not saying that, how could Texas do that? Texas is playing by the rules that that are in play right now, you know, and if I, if DK Moore and Colin Simmons were in the state of Louisiana, I, I would say do whatever you have to do not to lose those guys. Because, you know, I mean, what's LSU's formula? When your state first, cherry pick around you for, for, for needs. You know, I mean, one thing that has haunted Texas, Texas A&M, is that, I mean, LSU, amongst others, has gone into, deep into Texas and taken players. Caleb Von Chasson, okay, you know, Jamal Adams. Adams. I mean, you know. Brandon LaFell, they've been doing it forever. So, I mean... Russell Shepard. Yeah, I mean, Harvey Williams. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean they, they've been doing it forever. So, it's... If Sarkeesian saying, enough, we're closing the border. How are we going to do that? We're just going to pay them. You know, I mean, we're just going to make sure that they don't leave. Okay, good strategy. In an NIL world where people are negotiating and recruiting with money, let's just outbid everybody. Sounds great. I mean, that, that to me is if you're Texas, it would be moronic not to use that strategy. Like, hey, fellas, our coffers are deeper than everybody's. We care about football just as much as everybody. Our state is loaded with talent. That's why everybody's camping out and taking as many of the top flight players as possible. Let's get in the game. How do we do that? Just make sure they don't leave. I mean, Georgia's done it to Georgia. LSU's done it to Louisiana. Florida, Florida State has done it to Florida. Miami. It's, you know, I mean, in states that are producing top talent, you can get the NFL numbers every single year. Where are the players coming from? You've got so many from so many states. You look at Louisiana, Georgia, Florida, Texas, and California – a lot of them come from there. You know? I mean, that's that's why Saban, if you, you know, go back and read his book, why he took the LSU job, he looked at the NFL numbers and he was saying, guys, how is LSU not winning? Look at all the players in the league from Louisiana. And then he would get the, the four bank and say, well, they're all at Miami, Tennessee. They're <laughs> Texas, State. Texas A&M, Florida State. And you're like, Oh, okay, well then get me that job. <laughs> like, nobody can keep them in state. Watch what happens Watch when you build the fence. Uh, Sarkeesian's probably looking around saying, I mean, how'd Jamal Adams end up at LSU? On the last, like, <laughs> I mean, like a throw in. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, how did that happen? Well, I mean, you know, we just we took a we, we took a safety from Arizona. Like, you did what? And so And that was when I, that was kind of when Texas was like Texas was in that place because they like, couldn't recruit. Right, they hadn't had a draft pick. Could you in imagine so many being years. at Texas and not being able to recruit? Yeah. It's like guys, we we what don't we even doing? have to buy plane tickets. All of you get rental cars and go in opposite directions. You could walk three hours and let's build our roster. Yeah, I mean, like it's not. Let, let's not overthink this thing. We are the University of Texas. We've got more money, more history, more. Cache than everybody. I mean, the, the, the fact that, that, that Texas has been sleeping for as long as they have yeah. has almost been a gift to schools like LSU. Yeah. I mean, now waking up and, and kicking the beast, it's like, 
look, you just got over the Alabama hump. You just, I mean, Saban just turned in his retirement papers. You know, and you're kind of like, okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Looking around, you're like, okay, here comes a bigger monster. Mm-hmm. Yep, what that actually should be successful. I mean, like, here comes a huge beast, somebody that is really in the backyard. You know what I mean? Alabama was a stinger because they were in the SEC West and Saban would cherry pick Louisiana talent. Oh, this is the water boy you had your I playbook. Mean, LSU in Texas, it's almost like New Orleans. I mean, Houston, the Metroplex, West Texas, I mean, excuse me, East Texas, I mean, that that is LSU ground. You know, I mean, if if Texas starts to cut some of that stuff off, that that's a that's a hit. Well, that's what it seems like they're, you know, because of what has happened with the shift in the SEC and them joining the SEC, I feel like that's the major coup that they needed to be able to recruit against and LSU. Now you can sell the same, you can sell the same poison essentially of, oh, this is what LSU was offering. We got that too now. And you don't have to leave. Like if you look at some of the quotes from DeCorian Moore's mom, where she's, oh, there we go. With him being at Texas, I could reach out and see him often. DK Moore's mom said, I'm always back and forth between the Dallas area and the Austin area because my grandmother and great grandmother both still live there. I can drive down I 35 with my eyes closed. I like the comfort See, of him being yeah. in Texas and the, tradi- and the tradition the program if has. Tom Sarkeesian, tradition was in 2006, if I'm by the way. Like, buddies, we're not missing DK. Moore. She's telling you. Get her on the phone and get her here today. Do you want DK with her? No. We do not. <laughs> hey, this Bring done. her in by herself. And then he'll, she'll go tell him. Right. And let him go oh, to you're LSU. Signed. And let him go to Georgia. Let him go to Alabama. Let him do all that stuff. That way when he gets here, it's like, hey, man, good to see you. Yeah. You know, like Colin's been waiting on you in his Tesla. Right. Because, like, if you just, I mean, if you just cut it down to the teams that he has it cut down to, which are LSU, Ohio State, Texas, and Oregon. If you hear his mom talking like that, you think he's going to Ohio State or Oregon? Oh, no. no. <laughs> I, I, I know he's not, but I'm like, just saying, like, if you just cut it down to those schools and look at the receivers that went to that school, the players in the NFL, who stands out? LSU and Ohio State. Texas does not stand. Texas has five wide receivers in the NFL. And two just got drafted this year. And, right, and two of them just got drafted this year. But here's the deal if you're LSU. If you're LSU – and you miss on DK Moore, which at this point, if you're asking me to put my chips into one direction, I say you miss him. Yeah. Okay, on to the next one. Right? Like, I mean, you're LSU football recruiting wide receivers. It's not as if you're trying to sell, you know, like, I mean, it's an easy sell. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, okay, DK, go get him. Best of luck to Best you. of luck. Who's next? Tiger bait. <laughs> Right, I mean, who who's who's the next best on the list? Let's go get it. Who is it? Kalik Lockett. Yeah. Okay. Come on, French. Right. Yeah, French is probably the number two. Wiley. Yeah. In Georgia. I, I, Legacy. I, Legacy. I'll take him. Right. And now. not that's not why you're interested in him. Yep. He can play. Mm-hmm. Right. He's big time player. Jacob okay. Washington in New Orleans. All right. I'll take him. Yeah, I mean, like, that. it's oh, not as if... The cupboard will never be bare at LSU. Ever, ever. And that's why if you're LSU selling to DK, it's like, hey, buddy, I mean, like, we don't do this a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we really don't throw the bouquets at people's feet like this. Not I mean, a lot of people we just rolled out Jamar Chase for you. You know right. what I mean? Like, let me tell you the last time we did that for anybody. Never. You know what I mean? I, I can't remember. Has Jamar Chase done anything in recruiting since he's been? I think the most he's done is gone to a spring game. Yeah, he's at the spring game. Yeah, but, but like, I mean, like, I'm talking about actively... spending time yeah. one-on-one with well, somebody. Okay, so Jamar Chase does his off-season training in Dallas because there's a trainer, Mo Wells. He went to LSU, mm-hmm. ran track at LSU. Yeah. He trains all the NFL guys in Dallas. So I'm sure maybe so. that was a – Easy. They, maybe so. Right. They, maybe so. DK probably trains at the same place. So they probably, like, linked up, and Jamar was like, hey, Oh, LSU put a quick. call in. It's like, where are you right. at? Oh, you're not at OTAs? I see you. I mean, yeah. think, about, you? think about what LSU has done over the last six days in recruiting. Patrick Peterson spent the weekend at the facility in the biggest spring recruiting, summer recruiting weekend up to this point. Mm-hmm. And you got Jamar Chase spending one-on-one time with the number one wide receiver in the country. Yeah. I mean, this is a big time of roster building yeah. right now. 